All right, it's time and we are live. It's time for another edition of Stories of the Heartland. We haven't been with you in a little bit, but uh, we are back. And as, as always, we're bringing you conversations with authors that are either local or have uh, stuff pertaining to local uh, uh, culture, local, local features, local interests. And uh, today we have pe uh, a, a man that fits both of those categories, and that's Paul Blake Smith. Uh, Paul, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. Hope you're the same. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, excited to talk about this book, and it's been something, well, it's interesting the last few months, it seems like I have been uh, talking a bit with uh, this about a, a number of folks. And so, but it becomes relevant again here in that spooky season in October and uh, the build up to Halloween that, um, of course, gets, uh, you know, so much love and attention and, and the like. And so it uh, becomes a great opportunity for us to highlight some of those local authors who are highlighting the a bit out there side of, of the Cape Girardeau region of the, the heartland. And so, uh, Paul, you wrote Mo 41, The Bombshell Before Roswell. Can you tell us what led you to this book? I've been trying to make it as a screenwriter, mostly while living in Cape Girardeau, and that was a bit fruitless. We had one movie project that I wrote that got close to being picked up and greenlit and funded. And then the economy crashed in like 2007, 2008. And people had been advising me, why don't you just write books and not worry about Hollywood? And I took that advice at last. And I began to hear more and more about this UFO crash in my hometown of Cape Girardeau. And I thought, well, where is a book about this? Why has no one written a full-length book? There would be a paragraph here, a chapter there in someone else's book. And I thought, well, I'm a writer. I'm from Cape Girardeau. I know some people. I'll just get out and start researching this. And it took years, and it was very difficult because everyone from April 1941, the time of the UFO crash, has passed away. And in many cases, their children have passed away. And there's almost no one left to interview. So you just do the best you can and track down sources anywhere, even the internet. Uh, internet forums have information from people living between Cape Girardeau and Chaffee and what they heard over the years. And uh, I got to interview a woman who said, oh, yes, I remember that. I was 11 years old at the time. And uh, we lived in a farm not far from the crash site. And my parents and other adults would talk about these little spacemen that crashed in their little spaceship. Uh, and she says, that's about all I know. But I remember that well from 1941. And she seemed pretty authentic. And it's important that uh, she made clear to me that uh, they didn't use terms like ET, UFO, alien even. It was just little men, little spacemen. And uh, when talking to my own stepmother, she heard the story, she says, back in the 1960s when she was in Cape Girardeau High School. So the story really went viral around the year 2000 when the granddaughter of a Cape Girardeau minister uh, came forward with some family history that uh, said that he was called to the crash scene and saw the three bodies of dead gray alien beings and uh, their round metallic spaceship that was cracked open and he got a little peek inside and this is such an exciting story but everyone at the scene was hushed up when the army arrived or the uh, army air corps and they said this did not happen it's a matter of national security you will not speak of this ever again and some people took that very seriously you did what your government told you back then and a few people talked and uh, I think as the years went by, people became more relaxed about it. But then World War II happened in the 50s and the Korean War, and people scattered and moved away. Uh, there was a source online who said, my grandparents actually owned the farm where the crash occurred. And they were also frightened of saying much of anything about it. So he said on this online forum, I went to Cape Girardeau, looked it up, found the old man who had bought the farm. And he said he dug up uh, a cistern to put into the soil on the farm and found all these strange bits of twisted metal with uh, odd hieroglyphics that he could not make out. And he put them in a bag and hid them in his barn, and he won't tell me what he did with them. So there's another clue. I realize anyone can just make up a story, but so many facts and uh, information within this man's story uh, add another piece to the puzzle. And there was a, a local uh, author, she moved to Ohio, named Linda L. Wallace, who did some very fine research. She was from the Sykeston area. 
and apparently it was the Sykeston Area Air Corps that traveled that night to the scene of the crash in Cape Girardeau, scooped up all the evidence and took it back to Sykeston, but probably not for very long. And uh, there's a, another angle about where it was taken, maybe Washington, D.C. And after my book came out uh, around 2016, I got a call from a gentleman who confirmed. Uh, he said my father was in the FDR administration in the Bureau of Statistics. And I looked it up and he was right. And he said, I was a little boy on my last day of school in the spring of 41. And we went uh, to the uh, Capitol building where he showed me this special storeroom and said there were three alien creatures in glass jars and uh, a box of debris. And my, he said, my father said, well, this must be just some sort of storeroom. He didn't want to talk about it, but he wanted to see things for himself because apparently his father had heard the rumor too. And there was an Ohio minister who told his daughters uh, long ago that he too went to a storeroom under the U.S. Capitol and saw three dead aliens in three glass jars swimming around in some sort of fluid and a box of debris and some like a circular ship cut up into pie-shaped sections. And it all matches the Cape Girardeau affair. And in those days, we didn't even have a Pentagon, a CIA, an NSA. So where would you take this material? There are storerooms that are uh, highly uh, secret and guarded underneath the Capitol, several stories. I researched that. It turns out that's true, too. Uh, so the story hangs together, even though we are lacking hard proof. Even to this day, we're still lacking hard proof. But it's an amazing story right there in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, my hometown. And I'm glad I got my book out and uh, I made a few errors in it. Uh, the crash happened in late April of 1941. So I revised it in 2020. And I hope everyone who would like to order a copy from Amazon or Argus Books uh, gets the 2020 revised edition and finds out all the facts. And maybe you'll find it to the crash site yourself because I have never uh, technically been there. I think I have it generally pinned down, but that's all I'm going to say. Oh, certainly, certainly. And um, I suppose one of the interesting things that you touch on there, and I, I would love to hear more about it if there's more to say, um, is regards to the language barrier, perhaps, when, as far as whether it's eyewitness or anybody that's received these stories, you know what I mean? Because like, like you say, these, these terms with which we refer to these have, have, had not entered the pop culture at the time. And as far as geographical differences in how pop culture would be received even today, they may not even be right. among, among there us. There was so, almost nothing in pop culture back in 1941. There was like Buck Rogers serial comics, uh, but there were no sci-fi movies of aliens and uh, in alien invasions. This was six years before Roswell. And it happened just a couple of years after up with is the um, uh, War of the Worlds broadcast by Orson Welles, in which it was trumpeted to the skies that there was a panic in America. There really wasn't. That was overblown. But it was the perception that um, I think the government held dear. that if you start talking about aliens, crash landing, that's going to create chaos and uh, social upheaval a panic possibly, so they decided to hush it up from the start and they swore the eyewitnesses to silence. But uh, I think uh, another factor was just complete shock, trauma at finding these little gray, big black-eyed space aliens, your typical gray creatures that you see in the media nowadays. Uh, that had to have been just uh, amazingly traumatic and uh, kept people quiet, sort of naturally, you might say, without even being uh, sworn or browbeaten by a government official. Uh, a part of the uh, story of the minister's granddaughter related is that her grandfather said there was FBI agents on the ground, or at least one. And I thought, oh, that's not possible. We didn't have an FBI office in Cape Girardeau. And I looked it up and by golly, we did. It opened just the month before uh, they were worried about German uh, pro-Nazi spies and saboteurs in southeast Missouri. We had a lot of German people in our community in Cape Girardeau, even a, 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 like a Lutheran church that was conducted in German. There were so many German people. So they wanted to keep this uh, crash a secret and possibly weaponize it, a secret weapon for the inevitable war that FDR knew was coming. So it's an amazing story. 
And it starts to make sense, everything, the more you read about it and learn about it. And yet, I've tried to interest uh, some Hollywood people, documentary, TV people, and they just do lukewarm at best. I can't get some serious interest. I keep trying. It's very frustrating. All I want to hear about is Roswell. <laughs> so where you, do you, in the book, is there enough for you as far as uh, coming to a conclusion? Is it a, something where you kind of stay in a state of non-judgment, kind of just uh, piecing through things? Where, where, do, where do you land in the, in the book, I suppose? I go ahead and say I think this probably really did happen. Obviously, we're lacking that hard evidence. Every time you think you have something, it slips through your fingers. It's tr like trying to nail jello to a wall, as I uh, often say. It becomes almost impossible, and yet the circumstantial evidence is fairly strong. Uh, when I was writing the book, I would uh, read about some other UFO cases, and I've never seen a UFO, by the way. Uh, people come up and tell me their stories, and I'm always amazed, and I'm a little jealous because I've never seen anything out of the ordinary. Uh, but there was a number of stories of people out in the farmlands uh, uh, near Chappie or south of there, and so many have come forward and said, we saw this silver ship, we saw these darting disks, we saw strange lit orbs at night. And uh, it makes you think that uh, we're probably being observed or monitored. And uh, while monitoring uh, Cape Girardeau, they might have had a mechanical error, pilot error, uh, a weather error. They don't understand uh, our gravitational forces, electromagneticism, etc. So uh, there could be a number of reasons why uh, aliens were fallible and made mistakes, just like our human pilots make mistakes. Even to this day, with all of our technology, we have airplane crashes. It's becoming more rare, but uh, it happens. And we are familiar with our planet. Aliens from another world would not be familiar. So uh, I believe it did happen, and I think um, if we can get more people interested uh, in places of influence, we could get uh, this story um, uh, at least raised, maybe not to the level of Roswell, uh, but we could get more attention for Cape Girardeau. And I'm sure there will be some people who will say, well, I don't want Cape Girardeau to be known as a uh, spaceship land or aliens or anything. And I understand uh, Roswell, New Mexico has just embraced it, and they have a museum and gift shop and merchandise and uh, they have attracted a lot of tourists, though, and it's been very, very good for their local economy. But in Cape Girardeau, we don't have a definite crash site. We don't have a museum. We don't have any artifacts to put in a museum. <laughs> Maybe that's why we don't have a museum. Uh, so it's uh, a difficult case to really get your hands on and really um, inspect it other than to read my book. And uh, uh, there's been uh, occasional mentions on ancient aliens of my book and the Cape Girardeau case and uh, in a special on sci-fi some years ago called uh, The Secret uh, Evidence That We're Not Alone. They reenacted the Cape Girardeau minister who uh, went to the crash site and said prayers over the, uh, the dead aliens. And uh, it's just uh, an utterly fascinating tale. I get a little ticked off whenever I see someone put it in the science fiction category. Well, it's not fiction. All of this is factual, uh, unproven, but fact. All right, and so I suppose kind of the question then becomes as far as, you know, getting this in front of more people, you know, mention Hollywood and the like, and, um, and getting it out there. Do you think that it becomes kind of a, a cultural intrigue, putting, putting Cape Girardeau as part of uh, uh, that, uh, that map as far as the broader conversation around UFOs goes? Or is there, yeah, is there uh, an angle, uh, still, angle as well yeah, about yeah. Um, further research? Yeah. Does, is there any more research to do that you think could be drawing attention to this? If anything would just pop up, like an old diary, an old photograph, a negative, some eyewitness account that somebody kept in their attic, we could really jump on that and do more research. But right now the case is stagnated. Uh, I understand that um, uh, Rush Limbaugh was in high school, uh, this is the rumor, that he first learned the story in the 1960s. And in 2007, I think it was, someone called the Rush Limbaugh National Radio Show and asked the question, Rush, what's up with this UFO crash in your hometown of Cape Girardeau? And instead of saying, get out of here with that nonsense, I don't want to hear this, it's not worth your time, he said, there's more to this story than you might think. 
and then he moved on to the next caller. He didn't want to talk about it, but he did not dismiss it. And uh, I was uh, startled to find that my grandfather and Russia's grandfather were friends in Cape Girardeau. They were lawyers who met in court and, and uh, sometimes in a friendly way opposed each other. And my father and Rush Limbaugh's father were friends. And Rush was my little league umpire in Cape Girardeau in the park when he was earning. He went by the name Rusty Saw. And so uh, I never met him in person. But uh, I was hopeful that before he passed away, he would release a statement on it. Apparently, he did not. All right. And so I suppose the, uh, with, with all of this in mind, with all of this information, is, is this something that you're still looking into? Is this something that you still, you know, you've got these, the, uh, a second revision, or a, well, a revision, I suppose, to uh, your prior book. Uh, is there any more that you would foresee in this story um, I guess pending. Uh, I learned more information after the original book came out, and I produced a second book called Three Presidents, Two Accidents. Uh, and looking back at it this summer, I was so dissatisfied with that book that I revised that one, and I think it's going to be coming out from Argus in a revised, updated form with a few more little Cape Girardeau stories, nothing major, I'll admit, uh, from Argus Publishing. And I'm going to have another book come out on a very famous uh, case that I was also astonished no one has ever researched and done a full-length book on. And that's the allegation that comedian Jackie Gleason went to uh, Homestead Air Force Base, met President Nixon, and was shown the evidence for extraterrestrials on Earth, uh, four dead alien bodies that were being held there in South Florida, right near where uh, Jackie lived. He turned out to be obsessed with UFOs and the paranormal. Had a huge library of over 1,700 books on uh, UFOs and uh, the supernatural. And so he badgered President Nixon enough to finally get the hard proof. I don't believe the description of the bodies at Homestead in 1973 matches the 1941 Cape Girardeau affair. So I don't think there's a connection between them, but I found it such a fascinating subject that we're trying to get my book out on that uh, by holiday time, the end of the year as well. So I've kept fairly busy and uh, it is fascinating, all of these stories. Uh, I get uh, messages from people all over now and then who've heard something or want to find out more and uh, I think it's something within just about all of us to ask, are we alone in the universe? Are we being observed? Are there visitors who just don't really care to get involved with us and monitor us? And it's just um, uh, exciting and yet uh, to some people kind of scary <laughs> that uh, maybe all aliens are not so friendly. Maybe some a small minority are a little hostile, but uh, I think the government wants to keep the lid on the whole story at least a little while longer. All right, and so just to get a, a bit of a survey across, you know, your career as a writer, what uh, what other sort of writing do you do? I, I think it would be good to, to get more of a profile here. Well, I've written uh, a Christian adventure novel, which was fiction. I've written a comedy novel, mostly fiction. Uh, I've written a JFK assassination book uh, that was nonfiction that got some good reviews. I think I had something to contribute to that amazing mystery. So I'm not all a uh, UFO author, but uh, I do find it the uh, most intriguing subject of all. I've written a book called President Eisenhower's Close Encounters in which he allegedly went to uh, an Air Force base and saw and met and spoke with some landed friendly human-like aliens. And just uh, in the last six months or so in the news, uh, there's been stories about uh, scientists now believe that there are other planet Earths out there in the universe, maybe many of them, that develop life in human-like form. There may be many other human-like creatures. Well, that's the, um, uh, the beings that were described by an eyewitness who met with President Eisenhower and asked him to stop our atomic bomb testing because it was sending out so much radiation across the Earth and into outer space. Uh, he declined to stop that testing, but it, uh, it is an utter, utterly fascinating book. So it's been picked up by a, uh, an audio book from Tantor Media, and you can listen to it or you can read a copy from Foundations. And now I've got some Hollywood people interested in that, so we'll see if I can get that on uh, TV or the movies. Uh, in the coming years. It's a long, difficult process, trust me. 
All right. No, I, I I can only imagine. I can really only imagine in that case that yeah. publishing. There's all kinds of ways things go wrong. Trust me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Paul, is there anything else you wanted to mention before we wrap up today? Uh, uh, if anyone has any serious information, a photo, a diary on the Cape Toronto affair, uh, contact me on Facebook on my uh, website mo41.info. Uh, I can be found on a number of uh, Facebook pages. 